What's going on my crew? This is Rusty. Welcome to another episode of Rusty. Builds, plays, adventures, hangs out, chills. Oh yeah. Uh, it's been a while since I recorded. Um, and I've got stuff to talk about. Lots of stuff to talk about. Um, I meant to get this some of the stuff finished off camera. But we didn't, so let's uh, get that done. Um, <clears throat> today, oh, you know what? I wanted this to be sand. That's why I didn't. Yeah. Today, I wanted to talk to you guys about a little something uh, that I feel like I really have been wanting to figure out for myself for a while and recently did. And so I want to chat about it. Um, and that's about living life, uh, for my, myself, living life, uh, trapped behind a wall. Uh, so there's a, um, album by Pink Floyd. Excuse me. We got a Pink Floyd fan here. Um, there's an album by Pink Floyd uh, called The Wall. And I've always had some identity with that album. Uh, don't want to go like too in-depth in detail. But essentially, um, the character in there, it takes place, starts at like around World War II, and the character's, like, father dies in World War II, and then he's got an overprotective mother, and the overprotective mother, um, trying to take care of him, ends up kind of, like, smothering him, um, and so he's, like, wanting a dad, like everybody else has, but he ends up not, you know, being able to have that um and so he's kind of looking for father figures and long story short he grows up and he ends up becoming a artist musician um and when he does he essentially gets to a place where he um I guess we gotta go to bed. Uh, he gets to a place where he uh, gets married, has money, and he gets, uh, unfortunately, uh, starts doing drugs. And um, then, like, he tries to find, like, identity in different things. Um, and all the while... He's in America, his um, wife back home in Britain is cheating on him, and so uh, he ends up turning to extremist values um, after he finds out, and they've broken up, um, and he becomes an extremist, but then, you know, you, you kind of find out that he's just trying to hide away from um, the pain that he's feeling. And so uh, there's uh, eventually a point where he, in his head, ends up going to trial. Um, and they say that he was caught red-handed showing feelings. Um... And so they end up um, bringing him uh, to a punishment. And the punishment is that they're going to tear down the walls that he's built around his heart. Um, and so they tear down the walls that he's got around his heart. And that's kind of where the story ends. 
Um, I've always identified with this because I feel like as I've lived life, I've really put up a lot of walls uh, around my heart, um, around, you know, my life and uh, like, not necessarily information, but um, I want to take some of this dirt and I want to fill some of these gaps in the area. I guess we don't need that there. Um, although we could build a little little hill here. It's probably a good idea. Make it so that it's not just a, a clear path. Hello, Skelly. You're dead. Um, so I've always, I guess, a little bit identified with that story. Um, not because, like, my... I've got my father's still alive. He's doing great. Um, but... Um, more along the lines of just... The temptation to harden your heart towards things. Um, and that's very, very strong. Um, especially if you're one of these people where you're saying, oh man, I really wish that I had a uh, significant other. Um, be careful. Be very careful because your heart is open to have that relationship and your heart is really vulnerable. Um, and the more you desire something like that, the more vulnerable you're going to be um, towards that. And the vulnerability that I'm talking about is um, an unwise vulnerability. So it's like walking outside and um, basically telling the world that you, you want a hug. <laughs> and um, not being careful about the fact that there are some people in this world that maybe you don't want to hug from. And if you're careful and you've been around the block a couple times, then you can handle it. Because you're a bit more older, you're, you're wiser. But if you're younger, it can be a lot harder. And some people get lucky and they're okay. But for me... Um, because of my own flaws in life, because of my own inexperience, that's what caused me um, to fall into some relationships that really caused me uh, to actually not be capable of that type of vulnerability with people that matter. And that's really, I think, where... There's an interesting line in the sand. Um, being vulnerable is a good thing. And I think as a uh, someone who's a guy, it can kind of sometimes be that much more difficult to be vulnerable. Um, and I'm talking about emotional vulnerability. I honestly can talk all day about things that I deal with and be um, socially vulnerable pretty easy. But when it comes to uh, emotional vulnerability, that becomes really tricky. Um, and like I'm saying, as a guy, it's even more tricky sometimes because we've got some social norms that kind of discourage um, 
being more vulnerable. Uh, and where this really comes into play is in relationships. You know, I was very vulnerable in my first relationship, romantic relationship, um, and wore my heart on my sleeve, really, to a person who really honestly didn't deserve it. Um, and the second relationship, I was possibly even more vulnerable, <laughs> if you can believe it. All right, there we go. That works for me. Nice and tidy. Um, but then something happened and because of my own choices, because of my own uh, lack of really wanting to um, I don't even want to say like vet the person or make sure the person was good for me or anything like that just jumping into the relationship and being excited for it um but not really being wise about how i went about the relationship and so now fast forward to today uh my i'm, I'm kind of jaded i'm kind of a jaded person when it comes to relationships um I look at uh, not just like a romantic relationship, but relationships with people. And I'm very skittish. I'm very much, um, you know, like, well, are they are they out to, to get something from me? Um, you know, are they like, what do they what do they want from me? Instead of uh being somebody who's actually able to withstand um having like somebody not i guess i don't want to say like me but you know sometimes people just they they do want stuff from you and that's okay um and nowadays we kind of get obsessed with this idea of like, oh, well, this person's probably narcissistic or something like that. Um, and the reality is a lot of us have narcissistic tendencies. That's just the truth. Um, not to minimalize somebody who's, you know, diagnosed with narcissism or anything. I'm talking about narcissistic tendencies. We like, for the most part, um, to focus on our own lives and what we're doing. Uh, and when it comes to other people, um, you know, it's very seldom that you can find somebody who's actually really, truly interested in, um, you. So, and that's kind of, I've noticed older people actually um can have a higher propensity of the extremes there's either older people who are incredibly obsessed with themselves or you find an older person who's like really really interested it seems like in in you um and it's kind of interesting um but it makes sense because they've either gone their entire life trying to work about themselves or gone their entire life interested in other people and trying to help other people and it just so happens at least from what i've seen that the people who really truly care about other people seem to be satisfied um and happier with their life than people who are not let me see there we go. But sort of going back to myself here, speaking of, <laughs> um, what I've really been locking on to and kind of 
I guess, curious um, to learn about myself is I really notice that I'm somebody who I have for a long time taken advantage of other people not because of like some sort of selfish like you know I want to get ahead um but just because it's easier to not be open I guess it's easier for me to um It's kind of hard to explain like if i oh yeah that's looking nice i want to put some cherry trees i think and kind of get that cherry uh look i think i've got cherry flowers over here little flowery things um it's easier yeah these guys yeah there we go all right, let's take down some of these cherry trees. Um, it's really, it's a lot easier for me to focus on on myself and, and the things that I want um, because being invested in somebody else requires you to be a little bit vulnerable in somebody else, to somebody else, right? Because if, um, you know, I become friends with somebody, um, let's say Curtis, if I become friends with Curtis, and then Curtis doesn't do what I think Curtis should do. Let's say I tell him I think that he should build um, a castle. And Curtis is like, well, you know, I don't really want to build a castle. I want to build, uh, you know, uh, a farm. And I'm like, well, Curtis, you know, you could build a farm, but you could also build a castle and it would be way cooler. And you get more views on your YouTube channel. And, uh, you know, you should just do that. Um, if he doesn't do that, I might feel hurt. I might feel like, oh, man, Curtis doesn't listen to me. He just kind of does his own thing. And, you know, then I'll look at his YouTube channel and be like, see, you didn't get any views. If you would just listen to me, then you'd get lots of views. you get lots of comments and, like, People would be way more engaged. Well, what I'm not taking into account is I'm not being vulnerable and saying, let me figure out what Curtis wants to do. And saying, oh, you want to build a farm? That's that's kind of cool. Why do you want to build a farm? What's What about a farm, uh, you know, makes you feel happy right now why does this why is this vulnerability you know it sounds like you know i'm just asking questions and, and all that well because i then have to open myself up to the potential of being wrong hello there we go <laughs> i have to open myself up to the potential of being wrong maybe curtis is right Maybe I'm wrong, and then what? Then what happens? Because if that's the case, and Curtis has been right this entire time, uh, then what else am I wrong about? And so it's easier for me to deny and think okay but curtis is curtis is just wrong not me curtis is wrong he should build a castle and if he doesn't that's fine but he's you know i don't know he's not not the smartest guy because that's how you get views and if you get views that's what matters you see that's what matters to me in this scenario not really but that's what matters to me in this scenario and maybe it's not what matters to curtis but i'm so blinded by my um 
I guess you could say values that I'm not able to see that two things can be true at once. Curtis may do better if he builds a castle. But maybe Curtis doesn't want to build a castle. <laughs> and maybe he doesn't want to even, you know, have thousands of views by building a castle because then Curtis is going to have to keep building castles. And if he doesn't like building a castle in the first place, then he's going to have a real hard time when he's done the castle and he needs to build another castle. And now he's trapped having to constantly build castles because he's Curtis the castle man. You know, it's like, we don't think about that stuff. We just kind of think what we want and then start attributing that and saying, okay, uh, you know, maybe this is what I want. Um, but, you know, let me find out about Curtis. What does he want? Because once I find out what Curtis wants, some magical things can happen. Once I'm vulnerable to the idea that, you know, I maybe don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to Curtis and how Curtis wants to run his channel and how Curtis wants to play the game. Because I'm not Curtis. And once I become vulnerable to that, then magically, I can become better friends with Curtis. Because I can learn what types of things make Curtis excited to build. And if it's a farm, then I can find ideas and show him those. Here's that vulnerability again, though. What if I show Curtis these cool farm ideas and he responds with, you idiot, I hate that. This farm idea, stupid. Worst idea ever. Well, now I just like really, really screwed up because I made friends with Curtis. I became vulnerable and said, you know what? Maybe I'm not right. Maybe I don't know what Curtis wants. And now I'm trying to figure out, you know, how can I help my friend? How can I help Curtis and give him some ideas that maybe he uh, can use um, in his Let's Play? And all of a sudden, boom, I get hit with a whole bunch. Dang, this looks pretty. I get hit with a whole bunch of crap. Now I don't know. Now I'm questioning my friendship. Are we even friends? Does he even care about me? I thought we were friends. Oh man, I love this. This is such a cool aesthetic. How do we take a good picture of this? Yeah, there we go. Love it. Uh, and so now I have to find a way to figure out how to be more, um, how to kind of start that over, start the train over again. How do I be more vulnerable? How do I, like, how do I make it so that I'm not feeling like garbage? We can't choose what other people say. I I highly doubt that Curtis, you know, would say something like that. But, you know, in the instance that he did, if I feel like, if I start to walk into scenarios and I'm like, oh man, I don't know if I want to share this with Curtis because he might think that I'm stupid if I share it with him. Uh, I stop being vulnerable to him and I start focusing on what's easy and what's easy is for me to go, Hey Curtis, look at this really cool castle. What do you think? And if he says that's stupid, then I don't need to care as much because I like it. But if I share something with him and I'm like, Oh, I think you'd really like this. And then he's like, no, I think that's stupid then it's almost like presenting him with a gift. 
saying, I'm thinking about you because I care about you. And, and you know, I, I want to believe that I know what you like. I want to believe that I know um, you as a friend. And then, boom. Come to find out, nope, you don't. And that, oh boy, that can be really, really heartbreaking. But, here's the thing. The As we allow ourselves to be vulnerable, we can get a get to a place where we get the best of both worlds because we can get to a place where something like that becomes uh, a place where we can say okay you know what if if Curtis is gonna be like this Maybe I don't want to be friends with him. We will swap these out with lanterns here soon. I just want to get some light in because it was a little dark last night. Um, maybe I don't want to be friends with Curtis. And maybe I, I need to protect myself and um, guard myself a little bit around him. And I'll focus my energy on invulnerability on other people and then i can go to fuzzy and be like hey fuzzy i noticed that you really like the uh japanese i think it is style architecture chinese style architecture I'm showing a little bit of ignorance but that's okay uh and you know fuzzy might be like oh yeah i i do it's how I'm challenging myself this season. And then maybe I can be like, oh, I just wanted to share this with you. Wouldn't this be, you know, really cool uh, to see a build? And maybe Fuzzy still isn't interested in the idea, but maybe he's a little bit nicer about it. He goes, oh, yeah, that would be kind of cool. And then that's it. But he never builds it. See, he's accepting the gift just doing it in a little bit different way, in a way that makes me feel a little bit better because I don't feel like I'm being rejected. Either way, now I know that Fuzzy is a safe place for me to be able to store uh, friendship. And you have to think about it in that sort of perspective right when when we are in life and we are trying to get friendships trying to you know build people around us you know it really is um storing your heart with somebody and when somebody breaks trust um they sort of betray your ability to have that um have your heart stored in a way that you know maybe you you'd want and so for you then you have to make a choice do i continue to store my heart with this person or continue to let them hurt it and the more that somebody hurts your heart the harder it gets and so for me my heart has been, I've allowed it, really, to really get cut up and sliced up and um, taken advantage of. And so it's made me cynical. And, and I've sort of said to myself, you know, I've got, I've got a heart made of jade. And I don't really know how deep it goes. But I find it very difficult nowadays to open up to other people, get to know other people, not because I'm not interested, not because I have some sort of narcissistic complex, 
But because... Man, if I go over to Fuzzy and I say, Hey, Fuzzy, I want to know about your life. I want to know more about you, your your architecture style. I want to know, like, what makes you tick. And he's like, you know what, Rusty? I don't care about you. I think you're stupid. <laughs> and uh, I have no interest in hanging out with you. That's That's what goes through my head. Why would Fuzzy do that, though? Why would he, like, it just, it makes no sense, right? But that's what goes through my head. And that's what prevents me, a lot of times, from uh, proposing things. Proposing collaboration ideas, um, working on different projects sometimes. You know, I, I want to make a castle. So I start building a castle and then we get to a certain point and then it's like, oh, wait, this doesn't look the way that I thought it would. People are going to look at it and be like, wow, this is stupid. It all comes down to lack of wanting to be vulnerable, lack of wanting to be wrong, lack of opening up. And so when I look across the way here, we'll just get a little bit closer so I can show you guys. When I look across the way here and I see the incredible things that this man has done, sometimes I think, man, I really wish that I could do that. I really wish that I could build the things that he's built in the way that he has, with the confidence that he has, and the dedication that he has. The thing, though, is that I notice Fuzzy is a teacher in his day job, which means if he's a good teacher, He's vulnerable to his students. And as a teacher, I would hope that he's a vulnerable person to knowing that sometimes he can be wrong and or just inaccurate, which means that he's okay with trying new things and it not succeeding. Being vulnerable to that and saying, okay, that didn't work out. Let me try something different. And not being afraid of people looking at it and going, hmm, yeah, this is crap. This is garbage. But kind of at the tail end of the episode here, it went a little long, but I think it important. So I need to be, I need to become more vulnerable. And that's what's going to bring me a little bit more confidence in myself, ironically. Not vulnerable in a haphazard way, but vulnerable in that I need to learn from other people. And I need to be open uh, to what other people are gifting with their with their lives so that's going to do it for today's episode we'll talk more about this maybe in another episode but uh, i hope you guys enjoyed and uh, until next time happy mining and crafting <laughs>